here's a quick few fly fishing tips for trout here in Oklahoma. So what do we need to go fly fishing in Oklahoma? Most of our bodies of water, you're going to just find with a four, five, or six weight fly rod. You go as small as a three weight and go up to a seven weight, um, but your fours, five weight, six weights, those are going to be able to handle most of the fish, especially a five and a six weight. Those are, those are really good. Just kind of medium rods to start with is a five or a six weight fly rod. Um, floating line, we're fishing relatively shallow water in the state. Not really much of a need to get out with sink tip line or sinking fly line. Um, unless you were to go out on maybe one of the lakes and you wanted to get out in a float tube and maybe, uh, use your flippers to troll, then you might use a sinking line if you wanted to get down deeper. But for the most part, floating line, um, nine foot leaders, they're sold in bags like this. Um, this is 3X, this is, this is fine, this is gonna be a little heavy. You're gonna wanna look for more of a 4X or a 5X. Um, and then our tippet, 4X, 5X, 6X tippet. Um, my standard setup is gonna be a six weight fly rod, um, floating line, nine foot, four X liter with about one to two feet of five um, X tippet. And I'm going to use that for any type of fishing, whether I'm fishing dries, whether um, I'm fishing below a strike indicator or just free drifting a nymph, or if I'm stripping and swinging flies. So that's kind of, that's going to be the setup that you're going to look for is just something with floating line, four to six X liter and four to six X tippet whatever you're most comfortable with. So we're going to burn through the three different types of flies and the three different ways to fish that you're going to find here in Oklahoma. You really, the most effective way you're going to catch, you know, the most fish in Oklahoma with the fly rod is going to be stripping and swinging flies. So we're going to go through those first. So you're going to have a couple of different choices. Um, looking for bead headed flies, something that have a weight on them to help get them down is going to help with your casting. Um, if you need to get down a little bit of deeper, adding a few pieces, a small split shot, six to eight inches above the eyelid um, can help you get down a little bit deeper. The cast is going to be a little bit clunkier, but sometimes that's necessary. Um, so we'll just start with kind of the, the standards, our beadhead woolly bugger. You're going to find these in, you know, four or five different colors, but your browns, your olives, um, your oranges, and you know your blacks you might throw a white one in there occasionally um but typically your browns and your olives these are going to be your go-to colors right here you're looking at a size 8 size 10 size 12 those are all going to be good weights um this bead head on it uh you're looking to cast you know 45 degrees cross current upstream you're just going to let that hit the water and you're going to let that current put a big bow into your fly line. It's going to get out ahead of that fly and you're just holding tight. You might give it a quick, you know, six to eight inch strip every here and there until it actually gets to the current just to kind of, you know, give it a couple extra twitchy dives and dips around boulders or right into the seam and into the current. And once it gets to the current, again, once it hits it, then you start giving it just quick six to eight inch, maybe even up to 12 inch strips, just quick little bursts until that fly has made it through the current, through the inside seam, and is then downriver from you. And once it's downriver from you, it's going to be easy. You're going to have tension on that line. Usually doesn't require any false casting. You should be able to, once it gets downstream of you, just give it good upriver flip and toss that right back to the same spot. And then just work um, your seam lines on the back sides of runs, in and out of boulder fields, down below pools as riffle sections come in. Um, always cast into the backside of current and letting it whip through. You can cast it right into the current and work the inside seam. But your woolly buggers, these are really going to be your bread and butter. Um, you're going to pick up the most fish stripping and swinging flies with these two guys right here. Just something in an olive or something in a brown. But again, you might elect for a black, an orange, a white, um, or something with a brown that maybe has a little bit of flashing. So those are going to be your kind of tried and true bugs that you can go out to any of the bodies of water, especially the creeks and rivers, um, and just strip and swing those. And you're going to catch a lot of fish. Some other options for stripping and swinging are going to be just your classic clouds or minnows, something with a olive or brown base through it, a little bit of flash, um, 
And again, if you need to get them down a little bit deeper, just add in split shot, but keeping your bait profiles, your hook profiles somewhere between, you know, probably not bigger than a size four, but you really want to live in your hook size between like a size eight and a size 12. Um, you could also get some jig head flies, maybe something with an articulated back off of the hook. Um, you know, again, whites, blacks, oranges, something like this. These are great on like the lower Illinois or the lower mountain fork where you might get into a bigger brown trout or a bigger rainbow. Um, working these in more of your kind of slack sections that maybe have good ambush points, big boulders, um, any type of weed lines. These are great for working out of seams in between boulders and just twitching these just like you would you cast 45 degrees upstream and just twitch them as your line and let that line bow and just um twitch those in between boulders till you get down to the end and it's downstream and you can flip it back up and cast again um anytime you're stripping flies swinging flies the less false casting the better just because these are a little bit heavier a little bit bulkier just a little bit more difficult to make that you know multiple false casts without catching something behind you getting a wind knot anything like that um so those are going to be kind of your subsurface um stripping flies now if you're fishing one of the lakes or the ponds and you want to use these then you're just casting straight out give it a few seconds to be able to fall down into the water column and then just quick six to 12 inch burst the line until you get it you know however however you feel comfortable with casting you know once you get it maybe 10 yards from the bank five yards from the bank then you go ahead and pick it up a couple false casts get it back out there and start it over so our other subsurface flies, we're more than likely going to be fishing below some type of float. Um, so here's your indicator. Now, if you were to be putting this on your line, these ones are great. They make a lot of different style indicators. Um, I like the little plastic ball ones that have a little eye hole right there. So all you're doing is on your fly line, up your leader. I'm going to use a piece of tippet right here to show. But if this was your line, what you would do to put this indicator on is you you bend double the line over just like that and you're just going to put that little loop that you made you're just going to work that through the hole and you're going to have a little loop on it like that and you're just going to put the strike indicator through the loop and pull tight and then that would this would be sitting on your line like this you probably, in you know, most Oklahoma waters, you really only need to be maybe four feet below your indicator. Um, maybe six feet on some places on the Illinois with some deep runs. Um, but more than likely, you're going to be somewhere between two to four feet underneath the surface of the water. Um, if you are using any type of, you know, nymph flies that you want. Or you can cast them out. Um and just do it like you would if you were um, swinging a fly. Cast it out cross current into that backside seam and just keep giving upriver mend. So instead of letting that line really bow out in front, you just keep upriver mending, trying to stay, keep a straight line with your fly line to where that bug is at and watch the end of your fly line where it connects to the leader. And, you know, you're just waiting to see that line either shoot out in front, pause or twitch if you don't have a strike indicator to go on. Um, and so productive bugs to use if we were nymph fishing, you have a couple different options. You can run, you know, multiple bugs if you want to run a bigger kind of a stone fly. Our two main bugs in Oklahoma are going to be your mayfly patterns and your caddis patterns. Um, so anything, you know, your big, your big stones or your submerged, these are good to use. It's just get your, get your dropper bug down but you could use these on their own, just something rubber leg, just stone fly patterns, yellow Sally patterns. Um, again, in that kind of size six to 12 range um, up to maybe 14 and use that as your, and then you would just tie on and then have a dropper fly. Uh, you might go with a San Juan worm, also very effective or a green weenie worm and a salmon egg of some kind and do a little egg pattern dropper below a, um, San Juan worm or green weenie worm. Those are going to be really effective. Little rubber legged yellow Sally flies, size 14, size 16, really good and effective. But we're looking at our mayfly and our caddis patterns. So pheasant tails, um, prince nymphs, those are going to be kind of all your tried and true. Uh, so we have, we have some pheasant tail here. 
And we're looking at anything from size 14 all the way down to size 22, 24. The smaller, the better that you can get out there. I'll throw some of these up in my palm, but we have, you know, your Bloody Marys, your Copper Johns, your Prince Nymphs, um, your Yellow Sallies, Crackback Caddis, um, Psycho Prince Nymphs, some Rubber Legged Pheasant Tails or Copper Johns. Um, but these, these are all going to be effective. And like I said, the smaller you can go, the better. So here's kind of our line of, of flies right there, but size 16, 18s, 20s, those are all going to be right there. If you can go down to a 22, great, just whatever you're comfortable with. But, um, the big thing to look for is you're just looking for pheasant tails, um, and caddis patterns um, that you have. Now, there's a couple of different dry fly options you can go with. You may see rising fish at any one of the bodies of water. Again, we're going to be looking for October caddis hatches um, and then sporadic mayfly hatches throughout the winter. Um, if we're going with our mayfly hatches, again, you want to keep it really small, size 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Um, you're going to see things labeled um, pale morning duns, PMDs, uh, blue wing olives, BWOs, uh, your your caddis. So something caddis, you, you're going to have your brown bodies, your olive bodies, your kind of lighter yellow bodies. I really like small mayfly hatches, kind of a yellow body with some purple flash through the top. Um, this, this is a bigger size right here. This is going to run more of a size 16, um, but... I'm looking to use a 18, 20, maybe even a 22, something that's just really, really small up there on the top. Um, your parachute atoms, uh, your blue wing olives, your pale morning duns, things, things that look like this. But again, just mayfly patterns and caddis patterns. Oklahoma, we don't have a whole lot of fly shops in the state. If you happen to be down at Lower Mountain Fork, stop in at the Beaver's Bend fly shop. Um, they can get you really dialed in on bugs for that river and then give you um, some tips for fishing like the lower Illinois or Blue River. Um, you know, they send guides out to different places. So you can get kind of good up-to-date information, especially on hatches that are going on. Um, if you don't want to just stick with the box where, like I said, you have some mayfly imitators, some caddisfly imitators in really small sizes, 16 and up, all the way up to 22s. Um, they can maybe dial you in on a very specific bug that they've been using that they've been having success with. So check out Beaver's Bend Fly Shop. Um, you can go to their website or you can call them, just Google search uh, Beaver's Bend Fly Shop. Or if you happen to be down the area, go ahead and swing in to the shop, get some bugs and get some local knowledge. Uh, Blue River um, and then the Lower Illinois, Lower Mountain Fork early in the season, early November. If we still have some hot days, we still haven't quite gotten super cold yet. You might elect to use something try uh, maybe in the late afternoon or evening going with like a rubber legged stimulator size 16 size 18 maybe up to size 14 but again the smaller the better or just rubber leg hopper patterns um we still you know blue river you might have some hopper bugs you get a lot of really good cut banks along where bugs fall off in the water so rubber legged ants hoppers stimulators things like that size 14 16 um, you can get bit on that, especially early in the season when we still have some hot temperatures, you still might have some grasshoppers out and about. Um, and then as we move into later winter, December, January, February, um, you really get into stripping flies, um, or just nymphing. Um, and again, stone flies, yellow sallies is your big first bug to, if you want to get down, um, and then run a small dropper off of that. 12 inches behind it, size 16, 18, 20, 22, um, of just something in a caddis or mayfly nymph pattern. Um, and that's really, the, those are going to be your just very basic, easy, take them anywhere, catch fish. Now, if you get really into it and you get really dialed in, that's when you can start reaching out to the, the local fly guides or the fly shops that you might call like a beaver's bend and they can really dial you in on some flies. But if you're just looking first timer or you're not really, you don't get out that much, but you want to look into fly fishing, I really recommend just starting out with stripping and swinging flies. It's super easy. It's a ton of fun watching that fly line shoot out when a fish comes and grabs it, you get that big hook set. Um, it's just an awesome way to introduce yourself into fly fishing. Um, and then you can, 
the next step is to go to just nymph fishing below a strike indicator. Um, that's going to help you catch a lot of fish throughout the course of the day. And then if you see rising fish going to a really small mayfly or caddis pattern, throwing it up on the top, always good to have a bottle of floating for your dry flies. Just take a little dab of this on your finger and work it into all the soft tackle on the top of the fly and then the underbelly of the fly. Give it a couple of quick, um, just blow on it just a little bit, just a couple of times, just get back behind it. Make sure it's nice and dry and that floating is dried on it before you start casting. You can even give five or six just false casts to make sure that that floating dries. Um, but having those, especially on more of your soft hackle bugs, like a stimulator where you don't have the, the buoyant foam of like a rubber legged hopper like this. Um, those are just great bugs that are going to get you out, get you started um, into trout season. So check out our other fishing videos for trout. We have one with artificial lures and one for power bait. And good luck out there on the water this season.